I think the native Notion wiki feature sucks. It drives me absolutely bonkers that it's separate from databases. There's so many hoops that you have to jump through to get this thing set up, all to just get access to one feature, which is page verification. And even as a Notion expert, I'm going to be frank with you, I still get confused on how to get to wikis. So I hacked it. Now, obviously, page verification and expiration is pretty important. It helps teams keep on top of their SOPs, especially when their product is ever evolving, like the client that I initially built this setup for in the fintech space. In that project, we migrated them from Slight, which is a knowledge management tool, into Notion, and it was one of the features that they'd hoped to keep without it being intrusive to their work like they felt their original platform was. So to achieve this hack and turn a plain, boring database into a custom wiki, I needed to include a few things. First, an editable page owner for notifications, verification options, an updates output to easily see what's going on, a simple layout and ability to hide access properties, and automations to keep everything running. The end result? When a page is created, the owner is automatically tagged and the verification is set to 30 days. After expiring, the automations are triggered to notify the page owner to review and re-verify for however appropriate. All the while, the updates property reflects the verification status for viewers to stay informed. And that's it. This fun little hack probably seems like such an advanced user feature, but honestly, it's really become a go-to that I include with all my clients. But I'm sure you're thinking, Sarah, why go through all the trouble? Why not just use the native Notion wiki and get over it? Well, the cool thing about this hack is that you can actually customize it based on not only the database contents, but how the team uses it, how they interact with it, etc. For instance, when the client I originally built this for, they have a wiki for every department, and IT tends to re-verify docs less often than their product team does. So this allows us to take our wikis a step further based on their specific team and their use case. Now, the only thing that the native wiki feature has the ability to do that this hack can't is select a custom verified date. But out of the 10-ish clients that I've shared this with, no one has needed it. And so until then, let me show you how I built the V1 of this setup. Oh yeah, and I also dropped this as a free super system on my website. So if you go to the link in the description or the pinned comment on this video, you can grab the installation guide for yourself. So to install this super system, first we're gonna start with a blank database. So brand new, just start it from scratch. You can migrate your content in there after. So we're gonna start here and add in our properties. So let's call this SOP so we know. Next, we're going to add our departments so we know which teams they are. So let's just add in, and this is if you are doing a wiki for your entire company, you can obviously skip this one if you're just doing one wiki per team. So just keep that in mind. So we'll just add IT and marketing. Then we're gonna do a select property for the verify. And this is going to be the native options that I'm adding, but obviously you can add what you would like. So we're gonna say for 30 days, for 90 days, we're gonna say out of date. And we're also going to add an indefinitely option. So this would be for pages that do not necessarily need a verification, okay? And then the next thing we're gonna do is add our formula for updates. We're gonna leave this blank for now. We'll go back and add the formula here in a little while. We're gonna add in a created time. Next, we're gonna add a person property, and this is going to be our page owner. Now, for this instance, why I'm doing it this way is because when I do migrations with teams, I am always the one that is migrating all of the content, but I am not going to own the pages long term. So normally with migrations, what I do is I migrate everything and then I have the clients go in and actually go through the process of verifying every document adding their ownership in there and verifying that things are good or realizing, hey, we don't need these docs anymore. Let's just mark them as archive. That's also an option I put in the verify status. And then that way we know what we can kind of pull out before we finalize the wiki that we're building. Next, we're gonna add another formula for when the verification is due. Again, we'll add that formula here in a minute. We're going to add in a numbers property and call that verify days. This is going to be filled in by an automation via the database automations. 
Now, the next thing that you can do in here is choose to create sub docs for your wiki. That is totally your choice. How you do that is you click the three dots on your database settings, click customize and click add sub items. So really, if we are looking at sample doc A, right, maybe we want to do sample doc A1 and so on and so forth. So you have sub docs here based on the content. And one other thing that's totally optional if you wanna do is add in a AI summary of the page. I think that this is a more than helpful feature if you, especially when you're doing wikis, that you do not have to type a summary. Just let the AI do it for you. Okay, so let's go through and add in our formulas. So the first thing that we are going to do is our updates formula. Now, what this is going to do is it is going to read the verify status. So if it's out of date, if it's verified for 90 days, if it's verified indefinitely, it is then going to format that and give you an output. So if it is last edited on a day, but it is tagged as verified indefinitely, then it will say last edited on. If it is verified for 30 days, for instance, it'll say valid until X date, and I'll show you. So now that we've reformatted our formula, just know if you're copying this from the installation guide, you might need to fix some of the property names and re-tag them. So just follow along if you get any errors. Um, also, as I'm recording this, this is pretty cool that a new little ad in Notion is that if there's an issue with the formula, they are now giving you this little error icon, which I love. So let's go ahead and click save on that. So as you can see, there's nothing in verify, which means it's just showing the last edited time here. So what we wanna do, let's say we're gonna do for 30 days. So now you will see that the update changed to verified on January, verified until January 7th, 2025. So if you see when I click on indefinitely, it just stays the same. And it just says that the last update was on December 8th, which is the last time that I edited it. So these are our first formula updates. And the next one is going to be verify due. Now, what this is going to do now that we've saved this is if we are, and we haven't added our automation yet, so just keep in mind that the verified days will be auto added based on the automation. But for this purpose, we're going to just hand type it in. But if we have verify 30 days because we said verify for 30 days here, what it's going to do is create a date for what actual day that it needs to be verified the next time on. And that is what is going to trigger our second automation in the database to then tag the person that needs to update it and re-verify. Okay, so those are our properties and we can ignore the database layout for now because what we wanna do is focus on the actual page layout here within the database. So in, in the page, what you wanna do is hover over the title of the page and click customize layout. Now, what we're going to do is first pin a few properties so it's just easy to see. Then we're going to customize the property group. So within the pinned properties, what I'd recommend is that we turn off backlinks because those are ugly, first of all. And we're gonna add our updates. We are going to maybe add our department so we know which department the page belongs to. And then we will also include the verify dropdown. So if this is, let's say IT, we'll see IT for 30 days until this. Now remember if it's indefinitely, it'll say when the last update was. So that's our first thing. And then let's go ahead and move this property group back to the panel so we can edit it. Now, if you are using subdocs, what I would recommend is create a separate section for your subdocs here. And we didn't rename this, but I would rename sub item to sub doc for this purpose. So we'll say sub docs here. So you can always see those drop downs. There's no limit. We're good here. And then what we're going to do is add in the page summary here. And we'll drag up this and drop that. And we'll say um, AI doc summary. So that way you have a dedicated space. Now the rest of these items can be hidden. They don't need to be shown unless you want them as a property group on the page. And then obviously now with the new layouts with customized features, you can toggle that close and hide it. But in my opinion, because all of the, all of the properties that are remaining are either A, set based on database automations or two 
cannot be edited. So for instance, like the created time and last edited, you can't change those dates. You don't need to see those because we built this updates formula. So then, you know, you can kind of reorganize them, but you really don't need to see these at all. So what it'll do if we keep it in the side panel is it will be a toggle left and right versus seeing it on the page. So if you haven't played with customized layouts, this is what it will look like. And let's just actually change these around. So we'll say, um, we'll say primary doc for our initial um, sub item parent item. So we'll say property doc page owner, we'll say cur last edited time, we will say last edited by that works. And verify signee verify date does none of those matter. So then we'll click apply to pages. And so now you can see here, we have this really pretty layout with our sub docs, we have all this, you can obviously add in these items, we can add in updates, maybe and verify so you can change things there and maybe we actually want to turn off all of our comments so we are going to go to click here click off show prop maybe we don't even want to show property icons now that you can toggle those off i obsessed obsessed okay so now if you want to see those other properties up here in the top right corner there's kind of this like tv looking icon so if you click it it then shows all of your other properties so that is the setup now let's go back into our database view obviously you can rearrange these product properties however you want but let's set up the automations so the first one that we need is going to be for the verify days calculation we're gonna say verify do calculation. So when a paid any property is edited, we are going to edit a property, or sorry, edit pages within this database. And we are only going to edit pages where the verify is set to, we'll start with 30 days. And then we are going to add verify days. We're gonna say 30 here. And then we're gonna just duplicate this because now you can do that and it's really fun. And we're gonna change 30 days to 90 and we're going to change this to 90. And then the last one is if it is indefinitely, we are just going to set it to zero. So that way it is not calculating, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and click create. Now our next automation is going to be for the verify notification. So when that date hits, we want to be notifying the person that owns the page that it's time to re-verify. So again, when any property is edited, and we are going to, again, edit pages in this database, and we are going to match it that if the verify due is today, then we are going to verify the assignee the page creator. Now, one option that you could do here is that you could do it where, let's add an action above, and we're gonna define a variable. So this is this is kind of that next level if you are um, kind of doing what I do with migrations where you will let people pick their own page ownership rather than using the created by. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this page owner and we're gonna set a formula and we're gonna do trigger page dot page owner. What do I, page owner, here we go. So what this is going to do is it's basically gonna create a custom variable and pull the content from that property. So we're gonna click save. And so instead of the page creator, you can go to custom formula and click page owner here and click create. And then the last thing that we're going to do is a page indefinitely. So this will basically trigger if a verification is empty, if a verify status is empty, it will just automatically set it to pay to indefinitely for you. So we can do you can kind of do two options here. One, you could do when a page is added and it automatically sets it to indefinitely, or if a page is empty, then again, edit the pages in this database. And if the verify is empty, then we're gonna edit a property and change it to indefinitely and click create. And that's it, that's literally it. That's how you use it. So if we create a doc, we can set this here. 
you can see, let's call it sample doc B. It is in the marketing team and we're gonna verify it for 90 days. So it is verified through March 8th, 2025. But we can also tag it as that. Oh, and if it's also out of date, I forgot to mention this, in that formula, if you mark the verify as out of date, then it will say review and update there. And we're done. If you install the super system in your own workspace, make sure to give it a shout on social media so I can share it and give it some love too. See ya. Ew.